Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. You know, Tracy, in the past, a lot of people thought that radiology was sort of a boring specialty. Hmm. In fact, I can remember when I was in medical school, we used to call them shadow doctors <laughs> because really all they did was read x-rays and x-rays were essentially shadows. Okay. But you know, that has really changed. That's before CT scans, before MRI scans, before PET scans. And now radiologists are actually treating patients. They're intervening in ways that we never even thought of. It's a subspecialty called interventional radiology. Long way from shadow doctors. shadow doctors. No longer are they shadow doctors. We recently talked with Dr. Naval Kopsel, who told us about radiologists treating uterine fibroids. And today we'll learn what else they're doing to blood vessel, that's vascular malformations of the face and aneurysms of the brain. Joining us in studio is Mayo, Mayo Clinic no uh, radiologist, Dr. Walid Brinjikji. Welcome to the program, Dr. Brinjikji. Thank you. Can you say that very well? That's got a, your name's got a lot of J's in it. It does have a lot of J's. In it. Five dots, actually. <laughs> Brinjikji. Well, welcome so, to the program. Yeah, let's start with vascular malformations. Uh, what are they and what types do you see? So vascular malformations, uh, es essentially, they're abnormally formed blood vessels. And, you know, they, they can uh, occur in any portion of the uh, vascular tree. So they can there can be vascular malformations of the arteries, of the capillaries, of the artery and vein connection. That's called the arteriovenous malformation. Veins, venous malformations, and then the lymphatic vessels called lymphatic malformations. The and th these can occur anywhere in the body, right? But you concentrate on the ones that are on the face? Correct, yeah. So I'm what's called an interventional neuroradiologist. So I okay. specialize in blood vessel diseases kind of from the neck up and then the, the spine as well. So I focus mainly on the face, the airway, um, around the eye, uh, and, and you know other areas around the neck. And I'm... I'm not sure. I'm. Sh you don't use X-ray for this. Do you use CT scan, or how do you find those vessels? So I use either uh, ultrasound or I use X-ray for it as well. X-ray. Okay. Yeah. A lot of times these uh, malformations are are clearly visible on the face, and you know we can access them. Um, you know, with a, a needle, what's called percutaneously, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, treating these malformations. And how and how did they used to be treated? Why is this an advance? Well. You know, essentially, um, in, in the past, people have had trouble uh, identifying these uh, malformations. So a lot of times they were called tumors or, you know, it, and docs were kind of scared of them. So they kind of left them alone. Uh, but Because they were on the face. Because they were on the face. But but now we, uh, you know, have access to better imaging that allows us to better, you know, characterize these types of uh, malformations and we can treat them using what's called you know you know minimally invasive or percutaneous techniques essentially using imaging to guide a needle into the malformation and then injecting um, medications to help these malformations scar down so they scar down or collapse basically go away because you've cut off their blood supply uh, yep exactly and did it used to be that these were treated by plastic surgeons um, and excised, if possible? Correct, yeah. It used to be that if, if they were very, um, you know, uh, disfiguring or if they were causing, you know, issues with, you know, breathing or eating or vision, they would get excised with surgery. But surgery uh, for these types of malformations, because they kind of uh, infiltrate into, like, the, the tissues and, and go really deep down, the surgeries... You know, we're, you know, we're associated with, you know, higher rates of, you know, uh, you know complications, and disfigurement recurrence, too, and disfigurement, yeah. too. So here, you know, we can now do this, you know, essentially with the needle, the patients can go home that day and they don't even know, you know, where the needle was because the needles that we use are, are so tiny. Is what you're doing considered to be cosmetic surgery? Um, th yeah, th that's a, that's an interesting question. It, it's not really, uh, well, you know, some people would consider it cosmetic, uh, and, and that's reasonable. You know, sometimes it is purely for cosmetic re reasons. Um, but for a majority of cases, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, a malformation, for example, of the lip is impairing the ability of somebody to chew or eat, or a malformation of the tongue is impairing someone's speech. A malformation of the eyelid is impairing someone's vision. So a vast majority of these cases, 
you know, there's some sort of functional impairment, but we do do them for cosmetic reasons as well. Because, you know, I mean, uh, the, these malformations, especially if someone's a, a young child, uh, you know, there can be bullying associated with them. It can affect the child's confidence. And to be able to, you know, get rid of these things so that the kid can, you know, not have to deal with that kind of stuff is very important. So are most of these red and unsightly? Yeah, they're either red and unsightly or, or blue and uh, unsightly. If it's red, it's an arteriovenous malformation, so there's an artery component. If they're blue, then it's a venous malformation. And what's the biggest one you've ever treated successfully? Uh, yeah, so the, the largest one, I mean, you know, is probably like uh, 20 centimeters in size, which is pretty large, involved the entire airway and was causing a lot of uh, sleep apnea for a patient. It was essentially um, causing the, the breathing tube or the trachea to kind of collapse a little bit. So, you know, using the uh, CT machine, we were able to identify the malformation, treat it, and then, you know, resolve the patient's sleep apnea. I said 20 centimeters. That's pretty good size. That's, that's much like more six than... six or eight inches yeah. or so. Yeah. 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 Much more than cosmetic. That's right. All right. So, and you've got another device to treat uh, brain aneurysm. Tell us about that. A, a web device. Yeah. So... Over the course of the past 30 years or so, there's been an incredible evolution in, in treatment of brain aneurysms. Probably about 30 years ago, the only way to treat a brain aneurysm was with surgical clipping. So you essentially do what's called a craniotomy. You take a part of the skull craniotomy off. Craniotomy means, yeah, okay. Yeah, you take a part of the skull off. If they find the aneurysm, they put a clip across it to keep blood from going into the aneurysm. Then came, you know, something called coiling, where we basically took a, we go in from the groin through the artery, and then we take a tiny plastic tube called a catheter, we put it in the aneurysm, and we put little pieces of metal inside the aneurysm. However, there was a subset of aneurysms that we couldn't treat with coils because they essentially the co the coils would fall out and those patients would have to go through surgical clipping and now there's a new device called the web device which is essentially a a mesh ball if you will that you can introduce into the aneurysm through what's called the catheter that that tiny you know plastic hollow tube all right so remind our listeners what an aneurysm is kind of like a blowout on a tire yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like a little outpouching in the in the blood vessel. And, um, you know, in the brain, they're pretty small. They're about, you know, I, I mean, uh, a, a very, very large aneurysm would be one inch in size. You know, for most of the aneurysms that we treat are about half an inch or smaller in size. Um, and uh, if they do rupture or blow out, um, they can cause, you know, life-threatening bleeding in the brain. Just because of the pressure from the blood, huh? Exactly. How are those aneurysms detected? So a lot of times uh, patients, you know, they may get imaging uh, like an MRI scan or a CAT scan for headache. And they undergo the scan and then we incidentally, you know, we may find a, a large aneurysm that, you know, would warrant treatment. Um, that's for the unruptured aneurysms. Uh, for the ones that are ruptured, those are detected when the patient basically complains of the worst headache of their life and goes to the emergency room. And, and tell us a little bit more about this web device. I think it was developed right here at Mayo Clinic, or at least you were involved. And, and how exactly does it work? So, uh, yeah, so the, it was actually yeah, it was developed by a small startup company, and they worked with uh, our team here at Mayo to do uh, a lot of the initial uh, development and animal work uh, to help get it into patients. So it was really nice to uh, be involved from the, you know, basically the, the bench to the bedside, and we participated in the original clinical trial that got the web device uh, approved, and essentially, what we do is, um, you know, going in through the groin, through a tiny, you know, needle poke in the groin, we take this plastic tube up to the aneurysm, this thing called the catheter, and then we push out this mesh ball that goes into the aneurysm and it conforms very nicely to the aneurysm sac. So it keeps it from rupturing. Basically. Exactly. And it keeps the blood from going inside the, the aneurysm. And, and the procedure takes about... Uh, you know, like 20, 25 minutes. Oh, my God. Slick. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. goodness. Well, radiologists just don't look at shadows anymore. Absolutely I can, for not. Sure. The tests they interpret are now highly sophisticated, and they are developing techniques to actually treat patients with complex conditions like aneurysms of the brain and blood vessel malformations of the face. Pretty incredible. Dr. Walid Brinjinchi, thanks so much for Dr. being B. with us. Dr. B. Dr. <laughs> B. Thank you.